Welcome to part three of our special four-part podcast series, how you can buy a business for a more fulfilling career whilst building a seven-figure asset and securing your legacy for yourself and your family. Because myself, Phil and Jan Mark are so grateful to those who illuminated the buying businesses opportunity for us, we have dedicated these four episodes to really putting our hands back to help you see if this could be something that could change your life as it has for us. In this particular episode, we go more in depth on who we think should be looking at the buying businesses opportunity. We candidly share the challenges we have personally faced along the way, as well as what we've enjoyed the most. And in the final part of this series, we'll be returning to answer your frequently asked questions, your FAQs. So look out for that in two weeks time. Here's also a friendly reminder to sign up to our free newsletter if you want to learn more about buying businesses. Just head to uk-bcp.com and sign up and you'll get the direct learnings from us on the buying businesses journey. And now, before we jump into part three, um, we do have a special shout out to those of you who maybe have your eye on a specific business to buy or maybe an opportunity did come your way in the past and you didn't have the confidence to pursue it and you'd like to be ready for the next opportunity. Or if you've been working on a deal and it just doesn't seem to be coming together and you'd like some free advice or even to be personally mentored through this acquisition process by us, um, then yeah, we have a special opportunity for those of you ready to embark on this journey. We are looking for potential new business partners. So obviously the first thing to do is to make sure we're the right fit to partner up. <laughs> Probably should get to know each other first. Um, so if you want to explore this option, then do contact us through the UK BCP website, which is uk-bcp.com. And we'll simply get a call booked in or Zoom and we'll just explore what partnering up could look like, what you're looking for, what we're looking for. And in case there's any confusion, this is not a you know online course situation or where we're expecting money up front. This is a genuine outreach for business partners who we can work with in the long term to buy a business or multiple together <laughs> um, because of how closely we'll work with you. This, you know, we can only really do this for two or three people um, in the next 12 months. Um, so yeah, so have a think and if it sounds of interest to you, then just reach out to us. But we also wanna hear from you regardless of whether you're ready to pursue an acquisition right now. Even if you're just thinking about whether buying businesses could be for you, we'd love to answer any questions you may have and hopefully Part four will help with that. <laughs> it's coming in a couple of weeks. So yeah, so for now, that's it from me. Enjoy part three and we hope to hear from you soon. So I suppose, we've again, we've touched on this a little bit, but just giving people like just, I think this will just be a question that's on people's minds when listening to this. Like, how do people know if this is the, if buying a business is something that they should look at? How do they know they're the right person, the right skills, the right work ethic? Like, yeah, can we just give some people some specifics on like how they know it's for them or that it's something they should look at potentially? Mm. Phil? Um. Are you fulfilled in what you're doing right now? Mm. If the answer is yes, brilliant, keep on doing it. Um, if you have a sense that there's more out there and there's things which you would have liked to be able to do that you can't do in your current environment, if you've got something to contribute that you can't contribute in your current environment, then you need to find something else. Um, the, the big mistake that people make is, um, is thinking you've got to give up your day job. Mm -hmm. and, and you don't. Um, I was astonished, actually. Um, I've just read a book called Originals by, it's by Jason Grant. And um, actually... What the most successful people do is they start something else as a side hustle. Mm. So um, if they're not fulfilled in what they're doing right now and they've got some spare 
energy, some spare money, even some spare whatever enthusiasm, then try something, try doing what you think you should be doing on the side um, and see what happens. And if you're able to develop it to a point where it's viable, then you can have a think about whether you should give up the day job. But um, if you look at the world's most successful companies, the people who started them didn't give up their day jobs. So Google, um, the guys there didn't give up their day job. They were doing PhDs, they carried on doing it mm. and they ran Google on the side. Um, there's a really successful American eyewear brand called Warby Parker. Four guys started that. They started the business in their spare time. They didn't give up their day jobs. Apple, um, Steve um, Wozniak carried on <laughs> carried on working full time. Yeah, in the day job for two two years after they launched Apple. Um, so it's not an all or nothing thing. Mm. So it, it's if you. So the sort of people who should think about it are people who either feel unfulfilled, have interests outside of their job, or have, you know, coming back to what Yanni was talking about, curiosity, you know, they, they're curious about other things. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes what you find is that your, your hobby, your side hustle can then turn into your main thing. And that's what happened with me, actually, because... I when I set out on this whole buying businesses thing, um, I was still running the recruitment business, Jepsum Holt, um, and we were. I was looking at this as a as a side hustle. Right, I was hoping it might develop into something, but I started this on the side, and it was only when it, it reached a certain point that I I committed to it full time. Mm. Um, by which time I'd already we'd already done the first acquisition. Yeah. I think this is the beauty of buying businesses over buying properties as well in some respects like you know you'd have to buy like I don't know 10 properties in order to probably match your income if you were wanting to transition from running it as a side hustle to a full-time job whereas with businesses you can literally buy one business <clears throat> and that will probably more than match your income so it gives you that choice you know quite soon on you don't have to wait years and years and years to build a portfolio you'd have to, I mean, depending on how you're doing it you'd have to do a string of transactions i mean i know i know quite a few people in you know property and you find out well they, they appear to be quite successful in in buying doing up selling properties but then when you get into it um they're not making a living out of it they're still working full time in a job. Yeah, you get a lot of like husband and wife teams where, uh, you know, they're still really their income, main income is still coming from the job. So it's well, uh, it, it's it, it's also different on like the the property side is um if uh, and I'm sure we're going to touch base on on financing uh, as well as um but it's um. If you want to finance properties, um, banks just simply prefer if you have a full income, mm. um, while the business financing works a bit different. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. Without going too deep into that, that is like that is one of the reasons why you very often see that. Mm. Is there anything else to add to who should who should look at this, Yanni? Any anything else? We've not. Covered. I, I, I think when you um, you have to uh, you have to like people. Um, I think that it's like if you if you really um, and I know it it's weird that that's coming from me, um, but um, I I figure that out late in life that um, because I always used to say I I hate people, um, but as if you. Um, I don't like people that like don't want like that don't know what they want and that are just like slow and moaning and complaining. <laughs> um, so um, and it's different with other people that I do like them. Um, and uh, so 
but when when you have uh, like one skill i think you have to understand is if you are getting into that you you have like the the business administration side and accounting and so on assigned um you have to be able to understand how a team works how you put teams together um you should have like ideally you should have some experience in that if you maybe uh, like uh, have some leadership experience um but that that can be project management experience as well to be honest mm -hmm. uh, because it's like a lot of people think you have to have this hierarchical um uh, experience where you are the the manager and you are telling everyone uh, what to do and even though organization shouldn't work like that anymore a lot of them still do um i think if you are like in an indirect leadership like program manager project manager um where you cannot like force people to do something because you just tell them you do this or you go out of the door um <laughs> it pre it prepares you very well um for uh for the business because it's like you don't want to force people you don't want to play that card even though sometimes you have mm. um but um ideally you want to influence and convince people and i think that is a that is a skill if if you have that skill um it makes it easier if not you just have to accept the fact that you might need to learn that along the way mm. yeah i suppose actually that's just remind me why i think i'm quite well suited to to this kind of world is um, I'm I would consider myself a bit of a jack of all trades I have so many interests and so many different areas and I suppose it comes back to that curiosity thing I always always want to learn things even if it's not necessarily my strength or my wheelhouse I always want to dive in a bit deeper um, I think in the past like people have said to me oh you're a jack of all trades like it's a weakness but I actually think um, I actually think in this setting, it's a real strength because, yeah, everything you're coming into this fully formed business with and people have questions like people from every department have questions for you. So if you know a bit about everything, <laughs> you can kind of just about blag that you know what you're doing. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, yeah, I would just add that. Um, OK, so we're going to do the next three questions as quick fire as we can. So uh, no pressure. <laughs> it's fine if you want to take a couple of seconds to think. Um, a key lesson that we've learned on this kind of journey, and it can be the it can be the biggest lesson or the most recent lesson. It doesn't matter. Anything come to mind, Yanni? Any thoughts? Um, well, the, I think the key thing is even you might be impatient, um, that doesn't guarantee fast results. Mm. Um, so you, you might you might want to have fast results, but um, it sometimes just takes a little bit longer or you just risk to blow the whole organization up. Mm. Good one. Phil, lesson, lesson you've learned? Don't fall in love with the business you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like it's like buying houses um there's plenty of them out there and you may think that this is the one but um it's not there is no the one mm. there's, there's a range of businesses which will be the right move which will take you the next step down the road but the perfect because of what we talked about already you're buying you're not buying tailor-made things you're buying things off the peg yeah as long as it fits and doesn't look stupid then <laughs> yeah that makes it's sense good enough to take you the next step yeah yeah i like that one um i think mine would be listen to your intuition because like i said before there's a lot of things that can be measured and there's a lot of data that will be given to you but sometimes it's the gut feeling it's the thing you don't necessarily know where it's coming from or why you feel that way um, but it's usually telling you something crucial. The thing about businesses, I'm going to argue against myself slightly here, is the people bit, because a lot of the key components are the people. So obviously with people, you can have an intuition because you know about people. So you can get an intuition that 
these people are not telling us the whole story or yeah. you know these people are dressing it up to be better than it really is well that's what it comes down to doesn't yeah. it in the position process you don't really have a feeling of products or you, that kind of thing yet so it is it is all about people and yeah. that's what I was yeah that's what I was kind of referring to because obviously just reflecting on that stage where you're actually buying the business and all you have is what you, what you have are the conversations with the people or the data from the people <laughs> it's all people driven um okay so next quick fire question what has challenged you most on this journey philip i think probably the need the need to be patient the need and the fact that you're never going to move ahead as fast as you think you are um and alongside that it's the temptation to compare yourself against other people and their journeys um and you can look at yourself and think i'm a failure because i've only done this whereas they've done that mm. but the truth is probably that nothing is what it seems to be so either they're they're not really as successful as they make out or or what's good for them isn't good for you so I think it, it's you've got to yeah it's I mean patience is certainly one thing and then the other thing is is learning that it's your journey and it's going to happen for you in the in the right way over the right time frame and it will all be all right in the end and if it's not all right then it's not the end mm. good yeah true that true that <laughs> Yanni challenges well, I, I, I mean, one, one of the, uh, one of the challenges is, uh, is something, and I'm getting better at accepting that, is um, that um, only because like you want something, it's not gonna ha like automatically happen. Mm -hmm. um, and F Phil said it's like the patience for me is like uh, you have to accept the fact that. Um, your speed is not everybody else's speed it's like and only because you and that is something that challenges me and is like very linked to that is only because you understand it doesn't mean everybody else understands it especially if you are trying to um, get it into former uh, into the structure like on digitalization and stuff like that where like you're bringing something totally new and it creates this kind of shock for people and you you see that it's like the most obvious thing you should be doing mm -hmm. but they don't seem to get it so it's like this building this argument and so on it's like it's linked with patience but it's really it's like trying to make yourself understandable and choosing the right words is like mm -hmm. one of the biggest thing uh, mm -hmm. biggest challenges for me absolutely um i would say mine has been probably a, probably a confidence probably confidence I would say um I'm definitely I feel like I'm definitely kind of not I suppose overcoming is probably not the right word but I'm definitely getting more confident over time but I think when we first got started I had this thing about my age and I think it was, it was probably this time last year and Yanni we were doing a bit of a self-assessment weren't we and I was saying even when I go into these meetings with these business owners and usually Phil and I do those together where they you know these business owners are usually in their 60s um usually men but not always um and they're, they're talking to us about selling their business that they've run for 30 or 40 years and I'm this like 20 something sat there <laughs> with a big smile on my face <laughs> trying to trying to prove to them that I'm a credible a credible kind of person to pass their business on to um so yeah so I don't know whether you call it imposter syndrome or whatever but I think for for a, a while I struggle with that but yeah it's all help it's all helpful because as a result of that I came up with strategies to just go into those meetings with more confidence and little things like you know, making sure I go into the room first before Phil 
so I can kind of introduce myself and start talking before they automatically just look to Phil for all the answers. Because <laughs> if I get in there first, you know, I get to establish myself and I get to, yeah, it's just little things like that, but um, but have proven very effective. And I think since, yeah, since doing that, um, yeah, I think I've I've built some really good relationships with some of these business owners. So, um, so it was a challenge, but now I think it's it's become a the biggest learning in a way as well. <laughs> um, okay, and last quick fire question, or as quick fire as possible. Um, <laughs> that was a very quick fire for me there. Um, what have you enjoyed the most? Um, Yanni, do you want to go? No, how about you start this time? <laughs> uh, I'm so busy reading the questions then I'm like oh no I have to answer one at some point <laughs> <laughs> um, okay what I've enjoyed the most I think it's it's meeting the the, di the diversity of people that we've met so far especially in engineering which you know I had I have no engineering background and you know, I've got one friend who's an engineer, but aside from that, I have no, had no <laughs> kind of window into that world. Um, and that's just the sector that we've chosen to focus on in our buying businesses journey. But I've just loved meeting, yeah, all sorts of different types of people, like learning about their motivations and learning like, like most of them, why they were into engineering is very similar to why I wanted to be an environmental scientist like they all want to have their make their mark on creating the next best thing or you know, you know they've got a lot of ambition and yeah I've just really enjoyed getting to know the people that, that are now in our lives <laughs> so that would be that would be mine. Yanni? Well I, I enjoy problem solving uh. um, and usually businesses are never never short of uh, even though they appear to run uh, there is always something to improve and i and i just I, I just love making things better and then seeing the uh, as a result and seeing and seeing that being easier for the employees being like better for for the clients so that they they see effects and just like seeing something getting better every day um it's just something i i really like i don't mm -hmm. like standing still so mm -hmm. that's like this continuous improvement for me is a big big thing i love that phil um i think what what i've enjoyed the most is the the revelation of what small businesses are capable of and and, and the things that the beauty and complexity of the things that they can create. Um, having never worked in or with businesses that actually made anything, mm. been, that's been the biggest revelation of the thing I've enjoyed the most. I mean, the people stuff, yeah. I mean, obviously that's also a part of it, but I've dealt with all that before. <laughs> the, the new ingredient is that it's the it's the whole thing about manufacturing, hearing mm. and making things out of physical things. Amazing. So that was part three. Part four is coming in two weeks time where we'll be answering some FAQs that have come from you guys. Um, here's a reminder to go to the UK BCP website, which is uk-bcp.com. Sign up to our free newsletter to learn more about the buying businesses journey. And also have a think about the opportunity I mentioned at the beginning. We are looking for business partners. We're looking for people that we can build businesses together with. <laughs> um, yeah, for people that you know are in are interested in this for the same reasons that we are to build that legacy, to have a more fulfilling career, more freedom and flexibility, all that good stuff. Um, so they say at this stage, it's just a case of getting to know each other and getting it, getting to know what you need and um, for you to know what we need. So if you've been listening, thinking, yeah, this sounds good. This sounds like it could be for me. Um, then just feel free to reach out. So there's no expectations. It's simply a conversation. 
um and yeah and hopefully hopefully there's something there that we can work on together so that's it from us for now so part four will be coming in two weeks time and yeah it's been a pleasure take care guys